from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode, Omar Bayless joins the show to discuss the strides he was able to make last season, how he intends on growing as a player in 2024, and his friendship with Terry Godwin on and off the field. And we also hear from Tie Cats DB coach Brandon Isaac as we take an in-depth dive at the challenges of coaching. It's Wednesday, March 13th, 2024, and this is Tie Cats today. Omar Bayless was able to produce in the second half of last season. If you can remember when Duke Williams left the lineup, he was able to step in and get those looks he was looking for. He made the most of it, of course, having that huge game against Saskatchewan in week 18 late in the season, picking up two touchdowns. And he's certainly looking to build off of that heading into this season. And he joins me today to discuss how he plans on making that possible. So Omar, how you doing, man? It looks like you're enjoying some uh, outdoor weather over there. Yeah, most definitely. I'm good, man. I can't complain. I'm just out here getting some of this sunlight. You know, well, it's, been, it, it's been cold lately, so, you know, anytime the sun come out, I'm going to try to come out and try to, you know what I'm saying, be outside. And I got a son, too, so he ain't came outside yet, but <laughs> trying to get him, you know, a little active. Get him off the video games, get him outside yeah, playing yeah. some sports. Yeah, because he, he, he kind of like me. Once he started playing the game, he don't know how to he, – he can, he, can he can play it for a few hours, so <laughs> – <laughs> like father, like son, eh? Yeah, for real. Where are you spending the offseason, Omar? Uh, I'm back in Mississippi, back in my hometown in Laura, Mississippi. Right on. It looks beautiful out there. Yeah, it is. It's pretty nice. You know, good little day. I'm uh probably going to take my, because uh, it's spring break too for my uh, mm-hmm. nephew and them. So I'm probably going to take them to the zoo or something, you know, try to do something with them. That, so that I'm, sounds I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much family oriented. Nice, you know? man. That sounds like a great time. So you're spending a lot of this offseason with the family then? Yeah, most definitely. And, and, you know, we're getting that work, too. You know, uh, yep. I'm expecting a big year out of myself, you know, so I'm, I'm I'm pretty much locked in and ready to get going also. What's the training been looking like for you since the the start of the offseason? How you been doing with that? Uh, it's been it's been good, man. I've been – only thing with me, I've been just focusing on staying healthy because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're healthy, you 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 able to, to play at your highest level and be able to perform, you know, as, as, as the best you can. So – that just kind of been my main thing, focusing on just staying healthy, you know. Uh, and I'm just, you know, once I can be healthy, I can, I can be a, a very good football player. So that's the main focus. We really saw you come into your own as that second half of the season came on. You started to get those looks, and 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 you were taking advantage of it. How do you feel your the end half of that year went for you, and and getting in and starting a lot of games? Uh, it it went it went well, you know, and I appreciate uh coach and them for the opportunities they that they gave me and just for me a chance to you know what I'm saying showcase my ability. So, you know, it it was awesome. It kind of got me uh going to get the feel of the game for for this mm-hmm. year. You know, coming up and I could just start out. You know what I'm saying how I left and I'm just gonna take it and run with it, man. I'm I'm just ready to get going, you know, because I'm. I kind of got the, 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 you know what I'm saying, the gist of the game and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, knowing how everything go, how, how people move, you know, the different schemes that, that people throw at us. And, you know, I'm just, I, done, I took that all in the heat and, you know, used that first year with them couple games as, you yep. know, something to get going, you know. And, and now that I know how it go, I'm, I'm, I'm all full force. I'm ready to get going. You know, I'm going to lock all the way in and, and I'm just trying to get that great call. Offensive coordinator and head coach now, Scott Milanovic, will be will be taking the reins. What was that relationship like with him last year? It seemed like you you really fit in well with his offense. Yeah. Oh, man, him, man, him had a good time because uh, it was a lot, you know, uh, you know, he did a great job also uh, coming in with the stuff he had going on to really, you know what I'm saying, keep the offense together and stuff. It's, it's going to be a great time with us. And we added uh, more weapons, more pieces to the offense, you know, mm-hmm. to, to kind of open up other things for uh, other people. So we, we should, it should be a great year for us. I'm, I'm excited for it. And I'm excited one, for him. One guy returning will be your good buddy, Terry Godwin. <laughs> was, was How were the conversations? Were, were you waiting for him to say he was coming back? What was that like in this offseason whenever we were waiting for him to sign? Yeah, man, him kind of stayed in the touch the whole time. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was kind of keeping me in the loop on everything that was going on. And I told him he can't leave me like that. You know, <laughs> we just didn't get started. So, you know, he ended up, you know, signing back. And, man, him just kind of pretty much on the same page with everything. You know, we're going we gonna, to we gonna just hit the ground running. You know, when we get there, we're going to do a lot of extra work, you know, and just kind of just take it from there because cause we, we kind of, you know, we, we real tight. So, mm-hmm. everything – 
I probably do, you know what I'm saying? He'll probably do anything. He'll do I'll probably do not saying it, you know what I'm saying? Like that. Yeah. But we're gonna always put that work in, you know, me and him both kinda come from like the same background, you know, kinda mm -hmm. same area, you know, he's not too far from me. So, you know, we kinda pretty much we on the same page right now to 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 become, you know, better players in this in in AD. So it's gonna be fun to watch. I it wouldn't be an episode of Tie Cats today with Omar Bayless without asking about the Madden rivalry. I think this is going to be the last time I ask about it. But how has it been over the off season? Are you guys playing online or what? You know, you know, you know, it's bad when he don't even mention Madden no more. So, <laughs> you know, I pretty much, I think I kind of, I think I got the crown on that, on that mm -hmm. with the with the Madden. So, I think yeah. I'm, I think I'm, I think I got him on that. <laughs> he was, he was telling me he has a cousin that's that he's throwing on the game to play you, and he's yeah. giving you a run for his money. It's crazy because he called me, he FaceTimed me, and he, we talked about that. But <laughs> he ain't never hit me back about it, so you know I was waiting. <laughs> so whenever he want to set it up, you know, probably you can kind of get that message out to him, or we can kind of get that going. Maybe he'll do it then. T Terry's not playing anymore. He's now coaching his cousin to play you in Madden. That's crazy. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that's what he do. You know, he, I always told him he could, he could be a great coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be a good motivator for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, a great coach for sure. Another guy returning on this receiving core is so important is Tim White. Uh, what can you say about him coming back and how important that is for your receiving core? Oh, that's that's very important. You know, Tim is a is a great guy. You know what I'm saying? Great player. He he just one of them guys you can always kind of depend on. You know, when it when it come down to to football, because he's real serious about it. You know, yeah. he 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 got. You know, he he. He's him, you know. They call him Tim White. They call him. It's really him, White. So, and I, and I, and I talk and I, and I talk to him too, uh, you know, during the off season a little bit too. And I and mm -hmm. I just told him I kind of the same thing I related to you. I just kind of told him, man, we just gonna, you know, we got to come in, hit the ground running since we all kind of, you know, what I'm saying, been with each other for a whole year. We kind of yep. got, you know, we know we we know the guys that we got. You know, we got to welcome the new guys that's coming in also, and we just gonna set the standard real high, and, and we gonna. We all just chasing the same thing on the same page. Do you feel coming in with that experience you got last year is really going to pay dividends? You're, it's really going to help you for this year to be even better? Yeah, I most definitely will. You know how it goes when, when, when you kind of get, you know, a taste of something, then mm -hmm. you know how it really is. So I'm that type of guy. Once I get in that fire and see how it really is, then I take it from there and, and try to elevate my game off the you know the mistakes I made in them past games last year and you know and try to just fix those mistakes and, and be the best player I can be to help this team you know get the wins that we're supposed to get and just be successful but I'm ready you know uh I just I'm, I'm really excited for this year because I it's gonna be a lot of great things you know what I'm saying come around so one guy okay. who's going to be co coming on to this coaching staff at, as your receivers coach is Naaman Roosevelt, a guy who's had multiple thousand-yard receiving seasons in the CFL. He's not very far removed from that either, but how much does that add, having that extra set of eyes who have been there and done that before to join your coaching staff? Uh, you, you know, it's always great when, when, you can, when you can get a coach that done played the game and mm -hmm. know what's going on. So you can I can learn a lot from him, you know, and uh, the whole receiver core also can. And, you know, he can relate to us sometimes when, you know, stuff ain't going right because he done been in it. He know how it goes. So yeah. it, it should be fun. And I'm excited for him, it's, you know, just just like everybody else. So I'm, it's going to be a great year. I can already feel it. You know how you can just, yeah. you know, just kind of sense, you know, great things going to happen. And I, I just feel good about this team uh, upcoming this year. Yeah, I feel the energy. Honestly, there's a, there's a buzz around this team. You look at the, on the other side, you got the defense and so many additions right. and how, how that's shaping up. We have a strong core coming back here on the offense. And I guess the guy that's really the biggest thing coming back is the quarterback, Bo Levi Mitchell. Yeah. I mean, what is that relationship like with Bo and, and getting him back and hopefully for a healthy season here, knock on wood? Yeah, uh, it's, it's always great getting, you know, the veteran quarterback back. You know, he, he's been through everything in that league and – you know, mm -hmm. he, he he fought through a lot of adversity last year. And one thing about him, he always kept his head high and, you know what I'm saying, kept positive energy whenever he came around. So, and that's the mo that's the thing I, I love about Bo the most. And, you know, as a quarterback, he always give his receivers chances also, too, to make plays. And, yeah. you know, you, you, can't, you can't go wrong with a quarterback like that. And he, he he's, he's going to have a great year also. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure he locked in, getting to work right now. So, 
And he got a lot to kind of, I wouldn't say a lot to prove to people, but, you know, a lot of people had died of him and, and kind of like gave up on him when, yeah. you know, when it, when it, when they ain't had no reason to. But, you know, mm -hmm. he blocked out all that noise and, you know, he he was helping everybody else when he, you know, was, was down. So anytime you got a guy like that, you want to you wanna keep them around and just kind of, you know, lean towards them because them, them good people to be around. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you can never doubt a future Hall of Fame quarterback. That's for Bo sure. Especially yep. not Bo Levon Mitchell, a guy who's won multiple Grey Cups. When you look at this team and you look into next season, what, what are you looking to do? And what does this team need to do to have a more successful year and have some playoff success, Omar? Oh, uh, I, I would just say we just got to we, we come together as one and, and just win football games because that's, that's what it's about. You know, just mm -hmm. getting the job done on the field and, and, getting extra work when we need to, because it's a lot of time on your hands, I, you know, within mm -hmm. the league rules, you know, you got a lot of time on your hands after you're done with, you know, what you're really supposed to be doing. So I feel like we we all can just kind of get that extra, take that extra step, I say, take that yeah. extra step and just, you know, and do what we do, because we, we got the talent, we got we got the guys in the, in, the, in the room, and our main focus is just getting the job done, you know, at the end of the day, just got to win football games. And, and, and that's what we're going to do. Excited to get going here, Omar. We're nearing closer and closer to training camp. How fired up are you to get on the field and get those cleats on and get back to Ron Joyce? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready, man. I, I've, I've really been kind of days down myself. Yeah. I, I, that's how excited I am. I just want to, <laughs> I just want to, you know, ain't nothing like football, man. It's the love of the game that I, that I got for it. And like I said, I'm just, I'm locked in on a whole nother level right now just to, kind of show people like the talent I really got and, and who I really am on that football field and also off the football field, you know, giving back in the community, mm -hmm. you know, helping people, just things like that, you know, and the football stuff will kind of take care of itself because I am who I am and that's just what it is. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I feel the energy, man. I feel the energy. I'm excited too. I'm not playing, obviously, but I'm excited yeah. to be back there with you guys, get to watch some football. So yeah. I appreciate you joining me today, man, and looking forward to seeing you back at training camp. Yeah, most dev. I appreciate you, Bray. That was Omar Bayless, ahead of our annual coaches clinic coming up on April 21st. I wanted to take a deeper dive into the mindset of coaches and the challenges that they face on a daily basis. And joining me to discuss his philosophies and opinions on coaching is Typecats DB coach Brandon Isaac. Coach, thanks for joining me again today. It feels like it wasn't that long ago we were we were speaking about you joining the team. Oh, man, thanks for having me. You're absolutely right. It was just a few weeks ago, and here we are again. Hopefully, uh, it's an entertaining time. I want to take a deep dive into coaching and, and how you approach coaching because a bunch of local coaches and youth coaches and all coaches from all over are going to come to Tim Hortons Field and work with you and the rest of this coaching staff. So I figured I'd pick your brain a bit on coaching. But the first question I want to ask you is, what, in your opinion, makes a good coach? Um, I think adhering to the room and understanding what the room brings and being able to utilize that talent to make it become one co cohesive group and working towards one individual goal. Yeah, and do you feel building those relationships with players off the field and not just having them as a number on the field is, is important? Absolutely, absolutely. I think you get more out of a player. For me, when I had the connection with the coach, it allowed me to give more and to do more. And uh, that's a part of me becoming a coach is understanding the nuances of the player-coach relationship and, and building that uh, foundation on more than just exiting the nose and getting to know those players for who they are and what they stand for and trying to just help them become a better version of themselves. Yeah, it's important to get to know the person. I totally understand that. And a lot of times people refer to that as a player's coach, but I think most coaches are kind of like that nowadays as it's kind of transitioning from the old days when, when coaches were, were more you know, fierce and wanted you to play and that's all that mattered to them. Is, has there ever been times in your career, and you don't have to mention any names or, or players, where, where you had to deal with adversity maybe, where, where something came up that a challenging player or, or a situation that you had to battle through? Oh, they always come up every year, <laughs> every month. Um, just like, like you mentioned, uh, players go through things. We all go through situations in life and being able to have someone to – to talk to and relate to uh, gives you a better perspective on what you're going through. A lot of times we deal with, uh, deal with a lot of things in our minds and create these situations, but having someone you can listen to and express your feelings to uh, helps the situation out better. 
do you feel because a, a lot of the times these players are so far from their families, they almost look to you and, and the rest of the coaching staff as that person to lean on in difficult times? Absolutely. But also just from, from childhood, like majority of these players are players uh, mm-hmm. come up playing football. So uh, coaches are really big role models in their lives. You know, if you say if an individual had to write his top, top five role models down of people who influenced them, I'm pretty sure that coaches are going to be in that list. And understanding that role as a coach and being that player that one time looks um, to a coach for for advice and for mentorship, um, I understand it. And understanding how to give instructions but also allow uh, players to make their own decisions is very crucial to their development. Do you feel that was yourself growing up in football? That was your case You when you had a lot of those coaches that you, you looked up to in a big way? It also motivated me. When I got to the yeah. end of the road of my playing career, when I no longer could make a play, um, I found myself giving advice and trying to help uh, players make their plays and understanding that uh, the more they knew how to play it. It's a funny story. Well, um, Coach O, um, mm-hmm. I can remember he always was telling me when I played for him when he was a, a – secondary coach for the Toronto Argonauts. He's like, B.I., it's okay to be an all-star, but it's better for people around you to be all-stars as well. And then mm-hmm. I, at that moment, I'm like, man, what you talking about? <laughs> but then I realized what he was talking about, what he was saying better was when everybody around you are stars and doing things, then it's, it's you have to not do as much work because mm-hmm. everybody's understanding their role and everybody's playing their position. And then now, as a coach, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take that approach to get everybody to understand that, hey, just do your job. You hear it mm-hmm. all the time. You hear that cliche all the time. Just do your job. But it's so yeah. important for everyone to do their job so that the the game is played more smoothly. So it's safe to say, while you were a veteran in the CFL, you were almost getting yourself prepared for coaching in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I can no longer make those plays. Those you know, <laughs> Coming in, making a, ju- juking me. Uh, in my mind, I can make the play, but my body no longer allow me to. So it was, a, it was a lot different. So as a player, you're able to see the play, and in, in, especially in your playing career, you were able to see plays a lot of the times. And Simone Lawrence mentioned to me an example of that when you were playing in Guelph for the Ticats and back in 2013. And he mentioned to me a play where you absolutely knew what was going on. Is that something that, that you can use in the future towards coaching, be able, being able to see a play develop like that? And so mm-hmm. we was playing uh, Montreal uh, at Guelph that time, and they was building Tim Hortons Field. And um, they would always lead uh, Terrell Sutton out into the flats. He would come mm-hmm. from the line of scrimmage, and he would go to the flats to the field, and he would make some nice plays. And I told myself, whenever that play came, it was my opportunity to – lay a big hit on him. And uh, just the way I dreamed it up, it had him. He came into the flats. I was there waiting on him. Uh, the biggest thing is is trying not to over-anticipate it. And so the quarterback yeah. doesn't throw the football, but I timed it up perfect, and I was able to put those pads on that boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lit him up, coach. Absolutely. There's a lot of young coaches getting into coaching that played the game at some level, but what questions do you get from coaches who are looking for advice? Or what's the most, the question you get the most? Um, what question is uh, how to position themselves to kind of be in my position. Mm-hmm. Um, oftentimes, um, well, in this day and age, we live in a microwavable society where everybody thinks and believes that they deserve to be on a certain stage or a platform. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in my case, I like to tell them um, I had to work hard to get where I am. And yeah. they have to understand that they have they need to do their due diligence and work significantly hard and, and position themselves to be in this position. Um, does that come with a lot of heartache, um, frustration? Yes. But at the end of the day, when you reach your goal of becoming a coach at a certain level, it's worth it. So just continue yeah. to to work hard and have faith and, and work really re- and continue to work towards your goals. When you got that first CFL position in Saskatchewan, w- what was it like transitioning? And I know, I believe you were coaching in high school, a uh, high school team before that, correct? Yes, I was head coach at Blackfield High School. For, so uh, when you went from that to then coaching in pro football, what was the biggest learning curve for you? Oh, uh, hearing what the coaches said in, in, in the uh, coaches' meeting room, because I'm coming yeah. from a player's perspective. Yeah. Oftentimes, and then now sitting down with coaches at meetings and really 
understanding the nuances of those meeting and how they view p- uh, players and things like that. So sometimes I'm like, man, did they really talk about me like that? <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> but uh, also just learning the the, the fine details <laughs> of, of, of running an organization and being a position coach and just uh, compartmentalizing everything. And it's a prime example. It's not like you were just given this job as the DB coach with the Ticats. You went from coaching in, at, at the high school level to, to coaching uh, or to being on a coaching staff to now being a position coach. It's, you know, it, it's, it takes steps. And even for an ex-CFL guy like you, a guy who's played in the league, it's not an easy process like people may think. No, it, it, it's really not. Because mm-hmm. the things you think you know, you really probably don't know. Yeah, you know because you have to be able to take your philosophies and now a DC's philosophy and mesh it together. And a lot of things come, a lot of things are, are happening. There are a lot of flying bullets and a lot of things that you have to adjust to. You have to adjust to my feelings aside, his feelings aside, and be able still to be able to teach him because we have an objective. We, we were trying yep. to win a football game. So it can become very difficult at some time, uh, at times. But however, I think I think it's worth it. And I, when you mentioned Coach O, and he, one thing he's so good at is is understanding people, and and a lot, I, and all good coaches and all great coaches are good at understanding people. Uh, how difficult is it to kind of manage each and every individual? Because everyone's different, right? Everyone's going through different things. Is that something that's almost the most difficult part about all this? I, I or think challenging? It is challenging, but I think it, the biggest thing is uh, understanding where they are mm-hmm. and being able to get on their level and able to move them up to your level. So yeah. being able to, to differentiate each player and being able to utilize a different type of uh, uh, talking style to be able to reach that person. Not saying I'm losing myself, but my wording may be different to mm-hmm. you maybe from where I talk to Joe, you know? So yeah. the message is the same. The message don't change, but uh, individuals seem to take it differently. So being able to listen and talk and understand who that person is and now utilizing that information to uplift and help develop and get the message across to that individual is very crucial this clinic coming up here in hamilton why is it important for coaches to come out and and learn from you guys like you and coach scott milanovich and and orlando steinhauer and and to get that advice from guys who have been through this i ain't gonna say important but it gives them the opportunity to see it from a different perspective Mm -hmm. you know um, a lot. Uh, oftentimes, we create our own narrative or our own ideas about how things should be run. But uh, my mom always told me it was uh, there's different ways to skin a cat. So mm-hmm. able to have other ways to do things because sometimes our way may not be the way, mm-hmm. you know. And then when it is the way, sometimes the ways change. And being able to be flexible in this game and see it from different perspectives give you a a, a, a chance to evolve and become more. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's great advice. And it's going to be a cool clinic. It's going to be great for a great opportunity for some coaches to come out and maybe see how it's done with the Ticats organization and get to work with you and, and the rest of that coaching staff. I have one final question before we go here. And this one might be putting you on the spot a little bit. But if there's one thing you wish you knew before you started coaching that you know now, what would it be if you could think of something? I don't know if it's right now. I don't know if I can come up with something I wish I knew. Because okay. I, uh the thing about coaching is it's about evolving. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like I appreciate uh, my perspective changing year to year and continue to grow and develop um, because oftentimes I, you can get stuck in, in the thinking uh, this is the way. Mm-hmm. But as the world changed, we are now in a technology world. Back when I was young, that, that didn't exist. We went outside and played. My kids, yeah. now, they are, they're on the – on the, on the phones, they're on the uh, <laughs> tablet. So yeah. uh, I'm cool with going through the things I have been through mm-hmm. because it's making me who I am and it makes me be a little bit more relatable to the people that I am associated with. So I don't think I really wish something I knew. Um, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm developing as I go and at what rate um, that is still to be determined in a sense because I, I, I want to be the best version of myself and I'm I'm just continuing to push myself if that answers your question. <laughs> no, actually, it, it answers my question excellently, honestly. it's it's It makes sense, right? Because you, you're not going to learn unless you make those mistakes along the way and those mistakes are what shape you into the coach or the man or the person you're trying to be. So, Coach, uh, it was a really great chat and great to pick your brain on 
on everything. And then we're looking forward to seeing you at that coach's clinic. So once again, thanks a lot, Coach Brandon Isaac. Uh, thank you.